So we're going to make a couple of videos on reviewing for the big quiz 8.1, 8.2 on sections 8.1, 8.2. So, so how are we going to get prepared for this big quiz? Uh, this is really adding, subtracting, multiplying, and dividing, and simplifying rational expressions, fractions with variables in it. So the very first thing to do would be to pull out last week's quiz, uh, section 8.1, and uh, study it, right? That's the first thing to do because not half of it, but there is going to be a handful of questions uh, from section 8.1, which is uh, simplifying fractions and also multiplying and dividing fractions. Um, that's where you factor first to be able to get multiplication, to be able to cancel terms out. And the second thing to do to review for uh, the big quiz that's coming up would be to study your homework, worksheet 8.2, specifically 8.2, adding and subtracting rationals. Okay, so this is the big hint. Study your quiz and study worksheet 8.2. You all know that I select questions straight from uh, these assignments. So let's take a look at last week's quiz. So I'm going to do a couple from this quiz just to review. So obviously there's going to be some really easy type of questions. There, there's not even a binomial here. They're both monomials. It's all multiplication. You know you could cancel out when you have nothing but multiplication. For example, the 9 and the 27 could cancel. If you reduce 9 over 27 by 9, you'll have a 1 on top and a 3 on the bottom. And then, of course, the A's, there's two A's up on top that cancel with 2, and there's going to be 2 left over on the bottom. And there's three B's up on top that cancel with three of these, and there's going to be 1 left on the bottom. Okay, and obviously there's no C's up on top, so your final answer is what's left over up on top. You could put a one, but you don't have to. Actually, yeah, you have to because there's nothing left up on top. So you have to write that one as part of your answer. And on the bottom, we have a three, an a squared. So let me start writing this down. Three, a squared. Also a b to the one and a c, so b, c. And that's your final answer for that question number one. So there's going to be a couple or maybe one of those easy ones or you just cancel things out on the next quiz that we have. Let's see what else. I already picked some of these that are going to be similar to the ones on the test. Here's another one where you just simply factor and cancel. So uh, up on top, this is number five from the quiz. Uh, up on top, we're going to factor out what's in common, the GCF. What's in common in both? Well, there's a five and a Y in both. So you could pull out a five Y. And if you pull out a five Y, what's going to be left on the inside? 2y plus 3 is what's left. And on the bottom, we could also pull something out. What's the GCF on the bottom? Also a 5y. So let's pull out a 5y over here and see what's left on the inside. What is left on the inside? 7y minus 1 is what's left. And of course, now that you have 5y times a binomial and 5y times a binomial, now that you have that multiplication on both top and bottom, now you could cancel out the 5y with the 5y. So the 2y plus 3 over 7y minus 1 is your final answer, which is option D in this case. So there's going to be some easy ones like that also. Uh, let's see what else is going to be on there. Jumping to number 6 on that same uh, quiz, uh, when you're dividing by a fraction, all you do is change the multiplication and flip the second fraction. So um, you could either factor everything first or flip first and then factor. What do you guys prefer? Flip first? Okay, so the first, the first uh, fraction, I'm just going to leave it exactly the same. And now the second fraction, I, I have to change the division to multiplication, and I flip the second fraction. So let me put a multiplication sign right here, but let me actually take this fraction and flip it. So that's the setup. You change it and flip it, and now we factor everything possible. So let's focus in on what we just wrote right here. On the uh, top left, what could he pull out? A 3. And if you do pull out a 3, what's left? X plus 2. And on the uh, bottom left, you have a X squared minus 9. That's a difference of squares, which means you could set up this format, parentheses, 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 X and X. And you think what times what is the last one that if you combine together as a middle one, what would that be? 
negative 3 plus 3, that's right. Um, so since we already factored this guy, factored that guy, I'm going to put a line through them so we don't get confused. Uh, let's factor the rest. The top right, I could pull out a 4, and what would I have left over on the inside? X plus 3 is correct. That's what's left over on the inside. So we just factor that one. And for the bottom one, what could I pull out? A 6x, right? Pull out a 6x. And if we do pull out a 6x, what's going to be left? X plus 2. And, of course, we change that one so we don't need it anymore. So we now have all these different uh, factored forms. Now we could cancel whatever's alike on top and bottom. So as you can see, we have an X plus 2 up here and an X plus 2 down there. These guys are going to cancel. Put a line through it, put a line through it. And what else? We have an X plus 3 up here and an X plus 3 down there. Let's cancel those guys out. Cancel it, cancel it. And uh, what do we have left? We have numbers, we have coefficients left. But that means we could actually cancel the uh, 3 and the 6. That cancels, that cancels. Uh, there's going to be a 2 left over. And then, also, we have uh, the 2 down here with the 4 up here. We're going to have to cancel that. Cancel, cancel. You have a 2 left over up on top. So, it's funny that I'm explaining this one because the final answer is 2 up on top. And on the bottom, you have the binomial x minus 3. And you also have the x that's left over. You guys see this x right here? I need to put down that X. So ladies and gentlemen, that's your final answer. And the reason why I say it's kind of funny, it's because uh, on this quiz from last week, I noticed, oh no, yeah, it is. My bad. The answer is there. It's B. There was a certain question on last week's quiz that the answer was wrong. So the answer is B. So flip the quiz over to the back side of the first page, and let's look at a couple of these. I selected some that are going to probably pop out on the test or on the next quiz. So on this one, like always, factor everything possible. You can't factor that, can't factor that. This right here you could factor. So you have an N on the outside. You're going to have an N minus 6 on the inside. And then you could cancel out anything uh, that's alike on top and bottom because there's nothing but multiplication. For example, this n minus 6 will cancel with that n minus 6. Not only that, you have 5 n's up on top and 8 on the bottom. All 5 are going to cancel out with 5 of the 8, and you're going to have 3 n's left over on the bottom. And then you could uh, cancel out this single n up here with one of these 3, and you'll have 2 left on the bottom. So as you can see, there's nothing left up on top, and on the bottom you have an n squared. That's your final answer. This should all be easy to you guys. It's review. It's from last week. It's from last week's quiz. Jumping to number 10 on last week's quiz. Okay, let's factor out the bottom left, the denominator. I am going to pull out what? A 2. That's right. And what do we have left over on the inside? 5x minus 1. Okay, and uh, up on top right here, this, it's a little interesting because it is a difference of two squares. So we could factor it, parenthesis, 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 but you can't put just x and x. You actually have to put 5x and 5x. It's like if you were to take the square root of 25x squared, the square root of 25x squared is 5x. And of course, the square root of 1 is 1. And since there is no middle term, you, need, you, need, uh, you know that you need to cancel them out. So 1 has to be a plus, 1 has to be a minus. So that's the correct factored form of that expression, 25x squared minus 1. You guys got it? And last but not least, let's factor the bottom. The bottom, you're going to have a binomial times a binomial. Right here it is, x times x. And you think, what times what is 25? That if you add together is negative 10. That'll be a negative 5 times a negative 5. So ladies and gentlemen, we've factored everything possible. This is gone, this is gone. Those are the factored forms now. And now let's cancel this x minus 5 up on top with the x minus 5 down here on the bottom. Those are gone, no longer there. And we also have this uh, 5x plus, or 5x minus 1, and this 5x minus 1. Those guys are going to cancel. Those are no longer there. They're gone. Okay, uh, what else is left? 
we can't cancel the 5x plus 1 because that's not a 5x plus 1. And there is no more numbers up on top to cancel this 2 with. So our final answer is what we have left over. Up on top we have just the 5x plus 1. And on the bottom we have the uh, 2 right here. Yeah, and the uh, parenthesis x minus 5. And as you can see that is option A. Piece of cake. Number 11 looks confusing. It's called a complex rational. It looks complicated, but it's easier. Instead of writing it vertical, you have a fraction divided by a fraction. Write it horizontal. This fraction divided by this fraction. So there it is written horizontally. That should make things a little easier. And now we're going to uh, rewrite the division as multiplication, which means we have to flip the second fraction. The first one's going to stay exactly the same down here. And we might as well do a couple of steps in one. What is x squared minus 9 factored? So I could write it in factored form as a numerator down here. x plus 3, x minus 3. The 4, we're just going to leave it 4 for now. And uh, notice that, let's flip this guy. So we're going to have an 8 up on top. And instead of writing 3 minus x on the bottom, I'm going to switch them. And I'm going to write the x term first and the, uh, the number second. But the... The x has a negative sign, so I'm going to put that negative sign in front of the x, in front of the positive 3. So let me erase this and rewrite it as negative x plus 3. Wait, but don't you pull out a negative one? Yes, we're going to factor out a negative one, but first let's write it as negative x plus 3. Okay, that was just switching the 3 and the negative x. So now that you have a negative x plus 3, and you realize that none of these guys up here have a negative x, yeah, we are going to factor out a negative 1. And if you factor out a negative 1, you will end up with x minus 3. And that's great. You could cancel that out because you already rewrote it in factored form. And now you could see that you have an x minus 3 up here and an x minus 3 down there, which totally cancel out. And also the uh, 4 on the bottom and the 8 up on top, that cancels. You'll have a 2 left over up on top. So your final answer is uh, the x plus 3. And of course, we also have the 2 left over, and we have a negative 1 on the bottom. Now, the thing is this, when you divide by a negative 1, all it does is change the sign, right? So if I say like 5 divided by negative 1, the answer is negative 5. So technically, 2 divided by negative 1, the answer is negative 2, and you still have that x plus 3 left over, okay? So that's your answer right there, negative 2 times x plus 3. That would be option A. Third page, number 16, it's easy to do. Just remember this division bar, if you write it horizontally as division, it's easier. Check it out. So instead of saying this divided by this, you write it horizontally, this divided by this. And then, of course, this one, you're just going to rewrite it down here. And, of course, the division, you're going to change to multiplication. And last but not least, you're going to take this fraction and you're going to flip it and put it down here. And of course, since we have nothing but multiplication right here, we could just cancel things out. There's one H up on top that'll cancel with one of these, and you'll have three left over on the bottom. There's four G's on the bottom that'll cancel with four of these, and you're going to have two left over. So those four are gone, and there's only two G's left up on top. And then you ask yourself, could you reduce thir three on the bottom with 16? You cannot. So your final answer is what's left over. Uh, 16 G to the second is left over up on top and 3h to the third is left over on the bottom, and that would be uh, answer uh, B in this case. So we've covered the whole quiz, or at least a portion of it. This will come out on the next quiz. Let's now move on to the next video, which is going to be on uh, other questions similar to it. The questions from the worksheet, that is.